You know, the day started out a, a normal night, and and you know, we we meet and have a show up, and and Jaime, he was he was new to our shift. He had just recently come to our shift, but you know I had worked with him when he first came to Austin, so we we were kind of reuniting on the shift, and we had talked that night at show up about having lunch together and we left show up went into the city and you know doing taking calls and everything and, and uh, just a normal night and then about two o'clock we we got together and had lunch we talked about life talked about you know retirement and you know talked about his families, how proud he was of, 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 his, of his siblings, his, uh, Joe and, and Linda and, and, uh, and Johnny, and how, how proud he was of his dad, you know, coming across the border, bringing his family across the border, and starting a new life, a better life for his family. And, and we just had a really good conversation at lunch. He, he, uh, I remember he ate um, granola and yogurt. I'm like, what's this, man? I'm eating pancakes and sausage, and he's eating granola. He said, oh, I'm getting in shape. I'm getting ready to run a marathon, or half a marathon. And he was, he was telling me about how he was running from his house to the school with his daughters. Yeah, and um, I said, ah, oh, the girls are running. You're getting them running. He said, yeah, we're starting to jog from school. And, and you know, we ended the conversation. And, um, and, and went back, got in our cars, and Take three or four, three, three. he headed south and I headed north. And probably 10 minutes later, the call came out. And um, by that time, I was probably up on 620, and he was on Palmer, headed south to the car. We begin this morning with breaking news out of North Austin, where an Austin police officer has been shot. It rang at 6.05 in the morning. It was immediately a, a, a shock because I didn't expect this. Late breaking news from Austin, Texas. Just coming in in the last few minutes here, a gunman shot and killed an officer at a Walmart in Austin. He just never slowed down. You know, he just loved police work. He was an excellent police officer. He was senior police officer Jaime Padron. He had been with the Austin Police Department since May of 2009. It's something that uh, nobody really wants to ever think about. Uh, but there's always that chance of happening. A patrol officer re responded to a 911 call about an intoxicated person inside the Walmart. They pointed out the suspect to him. The suspect immediately tried to flee from Officer Padron. I can give two hour speeches, but this is tough. Within nine minutes, Officer Padron was inside and approaching the man. Just uh, been asleep for a little under an hour, uh, having come from another officer involved shooting. I got the call from our watch commander who told me that one of our officers had been shot. It was the morning of Good Friday. Uh, I received a phone call from our dispatch telling me what had happened and, and, and my heart just sank. Well, right before I got in my truck, I got a call back saying that he was sorry from my watch commander, but that Officer Padron had been pronounced uh, deceased at the scene. It's just, you read about it happening all over the country, but when it's somebody that you know, it hits you, it hits you even harder. And shortly after it hit the ground, the suspect took a semi-automatic pistol. Went out to my wife and I, I woke her up and I said, uh, I think JD has been shot. Uh, Jaime liked to go by JD and I said, I think JD has been shot. I don't know if he's alive. I don't know if he's, if, if, if he's dead. I said, I just don't have a really good feeling about this. Um, so immediately I texted him, didn't hear anything. It's something that no matter how many times you've seen it in your career, an officer lying dead in their own blood it's something you just don't get used to. He wasn't just taken from the families, he wasn't just taken from the department. He was taken from the people of Austin. You have to think about the possibility that every time you leave home you may not come back. But you also have to put that far enough in the back of your head that you're able to function. Because if you dwelled on that, you never get anything done. That's why this job, no matter how dangerous it is, it's worth it because you know that the vast majority of people are good and they deserve excellence in policing and that's what Jaime represented and that's what the vast majority of our men and women represent on a daily basis. Employees stated seeing Padron tackle Daniel 
and then Daniel shot the officer. That smile will forever be imprinted on the back of my mind every time I think of Jaime. It's kind of hard to believe that he's gone. Padron was not able to draw his weapon from the holster to return fire. He did manage to radio in he had been shot. He loved being in Austin. He loved working for APD. While he waited for backup to arrive, Walmart employees stepped in. He gave his life for our community. Officer Patron's death is a reminder of the sacrifices Austin police officers make every day. He was always willing to get out and push himself to help any officer that needed help. It didn't matter what agency they were with. I think because of his, his, his love for what he, he was doing, it was, uh, it was easy for him to get there and, and at 1041 work nonstop till 1042. And I, I think he had a hard time understanding why some officers would come and, and uh, work harder out of getting work than just doing work. Hami was a type of officer who didn't tolerate uh, you slacking. Members of the Walmart team, after our officer was shot, immediately without hesitancy, taking action to take that suspect and detain him. As a matter of fact, in the process of taking that suspect down and keeping him down, the suspect actually took an additional third shot aimed at one of the Walmart personnel. Our officers are aware of this, and I believe that that's the silver lining for us. It gives us a great sense of pride knowing that we serve people in this community that would not hesitate to put their lives on the line for this officer that gave their life for them. We will honor his memory, and his family will be very proud of him, uh, and we will do it in a way that's fitting for the service that he gave to this community and also as a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. I'm very shocked and surprised that uh, this has taken place and it is definitely a loss to the community and I can tell you that the Marine Corps Brotherhood has definitely felt the loss but uh, he is in God's hands now and he's guarding the gates of heaven with the other fellow Marines. Order! Hard! needs to be a little more like that. When you think about the size of our city, you think about the fact that we rarely have an officer killed in a line of duty. Uh, it, it's a blessing on one hand, but on the other hand, it's, it makes the, the loss that much more painful. Face. One, two. Aim. That's all about honoring memory. Fire. Honoring the sacrifice. Present. Hard. Order. Hard. It's not just a flag. It's not just a pipe. Hooray. Rest. At ease. They take time out of their own lives to honor their brothers and sisters. And you know what? It's never easy. First officer and each, we can just say step to notify the second because yeah. we need to know where those steps are at. Let's do it first slow and let's see how each piece works. I right, need guys. to get the casket back inside, guys. Yes, sir. All right. Oh, word. Huh. They will know for the rest of their lives as a result of everybody's hard work and the outpouring of love and support that their father didn't die in vain, that their father's death meant something, his sacrifice meant something, and that their father's never gonna be forgotten. And he will always be honored. And that means a lot. Coming on. Ready? Yes, From great tragedy came an opportunity for us to grow as a family and for us to grow as a police organization. And having been in law enforcement at that time for uh, 26 years, whatever it was, I've been to a lot of police funerals, way too many, but I've never seen 
the outpouring of support for Jaime and his family and our officers as I did on the day of his funeral. And to the Padron family, to Juan and Zulia, his parents, to Adriana and Olivia, his daughters, to his brothers, Johnny and Joe, and to his sister, Linda, on behalf of the city of Austin, I come to express my deepest condolences and the condolences of our entire community. He will not be forgotten. May God bless Officer Jaime Padron Semper Fi. I can't think about Jaime without smiling. Jaime always had a big, bright smile. He was always laughing. He was always ready to tell a story. He was always optimistic and loved to convince people that we're lucky to be police officers here in Austin. You couldn't talk to him longer than five minutes. What I'm bringing up is two lovely daughters. The passion for police work politics, the Marines, or how both of us were together. We never saw an eye on everything, partially because he was about a foot and a half shorter than I was. <laughs> but we always laughed over it over Dunkin' Donuts coffee, which was sometimes twice a day. <sighs> we understand that what happened Friday is not what this community is all about. They understand that anger is a wasted emotion. They understand that by showing compassion to this family, being here for this family, they're going to gather strength. And so the Padron family, you are special. Amy, Olivia, Ali, all of you, you're now part of our family. We're never going to forget you. Oh, word. on the radio calling for him and there's no answer. Austin Juan Adam, on my authority, retire badge, 6674, and hold officer Jaime Padron, 1042. Next thing you know, they retire his number, his badge number for good, for, for, for the rest of history, as long as this department exists. And that's something that I know really tore into everybody's hearts and to this day. I, uh, I know people, when they think about that, these tears to their eyes. Officers got to see that, you know what? People notice that they do a great job and people really appreciate and respect them for the job they do. I went down 35 and there were so many thousands of people on the route, on the freeway, on the side of the highway trying to pay their respects. Every overpass was just overflowing with people paying their respects. I didn't expect uh, the outpouring that I saw. To me, it was very healing, and to our officers, I can't tell you how many of our officers I said to me and to others what pride they got, the, the sense of pride they felt in their hearts when they, that, they saw that outpouring. That support just energized me and made me proud to be a police officer in Austin, Texas. I 
not just in Austin, but along that funeral route. At the conclusion of those services, we put an honor guard detail together, escort detail, that escorted Jaime's body back to his, the place of his birth in San Angelo, where he spent uh, quite a few years as a police officer before coming to the Austin Police Department. It was such an honor driving back and seeing how everybody turned out in all the little towns all the way up. It just showed the respect and honor that everybody paid somebody they didn't even know. Every town we went through, and it was heart-wrenching to go through those things and to know that all these people did that for him. When I saw the outpouring of love and support, uh, it says a lot about what we do in law enforcement, but also says a lot about Jaime as a human being. And about the time we stopped crying and get our thoughts together and everything, we come to another community, and it was all over again. I mean, there was hundreds of people in every single community that we traveled through. He was full speed ahead all the time, uh, and he was a joy to work with. He never, never had a bad day. I mean, he was always a pleasure to be around, a uh, hard worker. Uh, you couldn't ask him. He would, he would give you all he could and then some more. Oh! I'll always remember him fondly. Uh, he always had a big smile. And uh, it's like he always, uh, it, it's like he knew a secret about you or something. He, he was just a pleasure to be around, pleasure to work with. And I was lucky to have had the time with him that I did. He was one of those people who, if you knew he was coming to back you on a call, that in itself made you feel better. Having more officers with Jaime's drive and his training and his hunger to do the job better and better every single day, to make his community better every single day. To have someone like that on your shift is a blessing. He was a very caring person. He was compassionate when he was out on calls. He was uh, very aggressive and, and uh, looking for the bad guys. And, and he always talked, uh, uh, encouraged uh, those juveniles involved in gangs to, to try to lead a different life. It just hit me hard because the day he died was also my daughter's 13th birthday. So I was trying to balance the joy of her birthday and sadness of his death. It was a hard day. When he was in the gang unit, that's one place I always wanted to go. He would always work with me, help me anytime I needed help, give me all the knowledge I needed. He was always willing to get out and push himself to help any officer that needed help. It didn't matter what agency they were with. He was there for the officers, for the town, anybody and everybody that needed his help, he was always there for them. Even when he left San Angelo and moved to Austin, Texas to, to serve the citizens of Austin, I knew that the form of dedication that he provided here in San Angelo was going to be provided in, in Austin also. He was well known and respected in the city of San Angelo. That support didn't just end here in Austin when we left North, uh, the uh, Shoreline Church in North Austin. That that support continued to the very day of his internment in San Angelo. And it was a tremendous boost, I think, to all of us that came from Austin to just give our final respects. Uh, even though the department was a lot larger and there's, there's always a chance of someone being able to uh, become lost uh, within, the, within the ranks, I personally knew that Jaime was going to stand out. You know employees for two reasons, either they're really good or they're really bad, and in this case he was the best of the best. And we saw what honor Jaime's life had through the experience of that, of that, of that funeral.
kindle in our hearts a longing for heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us set the prayer days of darkness. It's like time stopped, and everybody put down what they were doing, and everybody came out to give honor to Hami. I really believe that from this tragedy, uh, we came out even stronger as an organization. We uh, recognize that with all the bad things that go on in the world, that there are some great people. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, good always overcomes evil. <laughs> William Garlow, an employee of Walmart, was outside when he heard a noise and was advised by a customer that someone inside had a gun. William entered the store yelling at others to get back. He noticed Officer Brotherman lying on the floor bleeding as his two managers were restraining the suspect. Attempting to render aid, William removed his own shirt, placing Officer Brotherman's wound and applied pressure until relieved by arriving officers. And this certificate is a certificate of appreciation for William Joseph Garlow, Walmart, and recognition for your support in assisting Officer Brotherman and other members of the Austin Police Department. It's uh, signed by me, so congratulations. And again, thank you. Thank you for your excellence for being here that day. We wanted to honor all the Walmart employees, but especially Archie and Lincoln. On April 6, 2012, Austin Police Officer Jaime Padron was shot and killed after responding to disturbance at Walmart. The suspect, Brandon Daniel, attempted to evade Officer Padron. Officer Padron gave chase, tackling Daniel. As they fell to the floor, Daniel produced a pistol and shot Officer Padron. Archie Jordy and Lincoln Lemire, on-duty Walmart employees, had witnessed the assault and without hesitation, or thought to their own safety, rush to assist Officer Padron. These guys were so humble. They wanted to be so far beneath the radar that uh, even on that day, they really were hesitant heroes. This is who we work for every day, people like these. They weren't looking for the spotlight. They weren't looking to be thanked or recognized. So again, thank you, my friends. Thank you, and God bless you for being the angels at his side. And so I want to just say from the hearts of every single police officer and, the, and, and member of the Austin Police Department, thank you. God bless you, and we want to present you with these certificates first. So. To me, the silver lining was how two members of the Walmart team without hesitation, put their lives at risk to protect Officer Padron, to protect their co-workers, and to protect their customers. ID 6674, his badge on there and his ID number. It says, thank you, Archie Jordy, and God bless you for being the angel at his side. They took immediate action to save lives and actually subdued the suspect, disarmed him, and held on to them uh, uh, until backup arrived. <laughs> Who knows how many dead people would have had that night had it been for the heroic actions uh, of, of those angels. And I, and I describe them like angels at the side of Jaime's final moments that they came in there. And, and I thank God he didn't die alone, and I thank God that we had people that cared enough about their fellow human beings uh, to put their own lives at risk. The associates at the store, at, at store number 3569, would like to say thank you, Jaime Padron, for your bravery and heroic act. We were there to recognize them, yet they showed up with the most beautiful memorial plaque. Ah, oh, boy. And then it has his obituary and that, that, that smile that will <laughs> forever be burned, I think, in all of our hearts in our memories. And you guys are going to display this at your store? That one's for you. Wow, That's for excellent. the Austin Police Department. Well, thank you very much. And we, we accept this on behalf of him and his family, his colleagues, and we would love to display this in the station where he last served. A huge, beautiful plaque that now hangs in our North Substation that they put together honoring Jaime. And Jaime wasn't just another police officer to them. He had taken calls there before, and he was known there, and uh, he was well-liked there. Today it's about these two gentlemen and the team of Walmart employees that were there that day for my brother. 
that not only helped with the things that she said, but also helped with prayer, and that we will never forget, and we will be always very grateful to you guys. So again, thank you, my friends. Thank you, and God bless you for being the angels at his side. And so I want to just say from the hearts of every single police officer in the, and, and member of the Austin Police Department, thank you. They did it at the right time, at the right moment, placing their lives on the line, um, just like my brother did, without, without thinking, without looking back. They, they did it to protect the uh, customers and employees there. So it's, it's very important. It's very important. We will never forget them, and they'll always be in our prayers and hearts. We are getting through it day by day, and it is getting a little easier uh, with God's God's help and the support of our community and friends and family and an extended family. Because we come to Austin, and this this is we we feel the embrace of the city and the people, and, and certainly the police department and his brothers and sisters in law enforcement, and uh, both here and in San Angelo. For his name to be memorialized this way and, and on, on the police station that, that he worked out of in Austin, it's a, it's a really big deal for us. <laughs> Both my parents uh, were born in Mexico, although they came to the United States at an early age. My brothers and I are first generation of American citizens. And for Austin, Texas, uh, his brothers and law enforcement to honor him that way. And it has a lot of meaning for our family and, and it will be there forever. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the dedication ceremony for Jaime. And I felt something in me that I can't explain because I didn't, I just didn't want his memory to fade. I wanted it to last forever. And as I got to the last tree, I looked over at the plants at the flagpole and I had a vision. And I told Jaime that I was going to build him a garden. One day I came to work, a hole was dug. Another day I came to work, there was a mound of fresh dirt to fill the hole. Days later, there were landscaping rocks. Several times, Mike would pop his head into the office and say, hey, they got you this and I got, they got you that. And I would run downstairs and I would look at all the stuff that was donated for this garden. And I would ask him, where did all this stuff come from? We didn't know, it was like manna from heaven, just falling. And at that moment, I had assurance that they felt like I felt. I also had a feeling of assurance that Jaime was pleased. He was pleased that I was doing this for him. Officers would walk past it and remember Jaime. And for those officers who would come after us and didn't know Jaime, this perpetual garden will serve as a testament to his dedication to his service and his ultimate sacrifice. And we will never forget. At this time, I'd like for everyone to rise for the presentation of the colors. significance larger than just its physical symbol, that it will be a reminder to all who see it of the great dedication and commitment, legacy that Jaime has left with this department, that it will be a reminder of the great sacrifice, for in your word you've said greater love has no one than to lay down his life for his friends. But may it also be a reminder, God, that we will never forget. Bless this time with your presence and your peace, particularly for Jaime's family, we pray. Amen. But because of his sacrifice, he is someone that everyone in the city of Austin, Central Texas, and really throughout the nation will know. Because in May, we continue that promise when we add his name to the Texas Peace Officers Memorial. And then when we move forward to Washington, D.C., to our national memorial, where the names of police officers throughout our history that have laid down their lives. And sadly, in this nation, about every 56 hours, 
every 56 hours or so, a police officer dies in the line of duty. And it's important that we never forget that sacrifice. Some may ask, is Hami Padron worthy of having this building named after him? I believe the right question is, is this building worthy to have Hami's name placed on it? And I know he's up there looking down on us and he's, he's proud of what all of y'all have done and what we're doing and the better persons that we've become by, by all this. I know some of y'all officers have become better officers. Us as a family, I think we've gotten a whole lot closer. We were close to begin with, but we have, I think I'm a better son, better brother, better father, better husband. Because this teaches us that we're here only for a short time. Although my brother died, um, his love and his memories will never die. They're always going to be with us. It's all right. It's okay. We believed they received a hero's welcome when they reached the other side of that heavenly gate. We believed that they were heralded by angels. It's comforting, you know, it's comforting to see that, that he's honored. Of course, nothing's going to ever bring him back. Heroes, patriots, and role models who did not flinch at the first sign of danger, but like all law enforcement, acted to protect us even though their lives were on the line. Because there's a tremendous amount of people here. I don't know how many people were here, but it was thousands. <laughs> we commit tonight to always remember the lives they led, the contributions they made, and the examples they set. It, it was just, it was just amazing. You know, it just, it's, it's just. Of course, we had one in Austin, and and that was touching as well. But uh, uh, of course, the amount of people here, you know, and 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 the amount of officers from across the nation that are here. And, and paying their respects for the fallen officers, to, you know, our nation's heroes that are given their life and, and, and trying to protect us. And that's something very honorable to see. The risks that you take and the sacrifices that you are asked to make are nothing short of extraordinary. And our nation owes each and every one of you a debt of gratitude we can only hope to repay. Being here last night and, you know, getting to experience the candlelight vigil and um, the hundreds and hundreds of people that were here. Tonight, as we come together on these sacred grounds where heroes live forever, we are united by the flickering light of our candles and emboldened by the knowledge that America's thin blue line has never been stronger. I had to take a step back and and really try to put it in simple terms in my mind because otherwise it's overwhelming. We're headed to the, uh, the uh, police memorial where we will participate in a memorial flag folding and we're also there to observe the parade, the Emerald Society Parade. The, the parade is uh, a group of officers from around the country and the world. We're all gathering here to commemorate uh, the officers that have died in the line of duty. As the Honor Guard, we represent officers from our department from around the country uh, in the ceremonies given to the officers that are killed in the line of duty. Face it, each other. Oh, you guys face it in. We're, we're setting up our flag team. There are honor guards and police officers from all over the country. I've met some officers from Australia and, uh, and Britain. So they not only come from the United States, but other countries. We've got to slow our salute down. Yeah, yeah I know. Just, they're all here representing an officer that died in their, their department or somebody that they knew or just supporting law enforcement in general. Uh, we'll do the whole, 
you're going to do the whole, yes. Well, I'm gonna, I need help. Final tuck. <laughs> no, I, I wrote, we just rotated it. Okay. We're going to okay. be uh, folding a flag for the memorial. <laughs> but since this flag is going to be significantly smaller, we're, we're going to cut our team down to five. We're going to do a five-man fold. Tuck. And now you're done. Yeah, half face, ready? Everything is a four count movement, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, and that way we're on the same pace and we don't want to rush anything on the, on the funeral. Mm -hmm. okay. it's, it's closing for the, his friends and family, our, our department, our honor guard. And we're also here to you know, pay respect to other officers that are on the wall, Amy Donovan, Clinton Hunter, uh, Drew Bolin, all those. They're on these walls as well. So we stop and we, uh, we say hello to them as well and, and etch their names and, uh, and, and remember them as well. So it's not just about us, it's, it's, it's about the families that are, are remaining, the survivors. So you know, that's why we're here. Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. We're all lined up here and uh, gonna pay tribute to our fallen officers. We're going to have a wreath laying. Every state is represented here today. Right shoulder. Right shoulder. Up. Day is done. Gone the sun. From the lake, from the hills, from the sky. All is well. Safely rest. God is nigh. Rest in peace, brothers and sisters. We miss you all. This wreath will be placed in honor and in memory of all of the 19,981 names that embrace us on these memorial walls, including the 321 new additions that we dedicated just last evening. For the next eight hours, through midnight tonight, we'll have a rotating honor guard stand watch for the fallen here at the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial. May these fallen heroes rest in peace, and may they never be forgotten. To us, you know, he's a hero and we love him so much and we miss him dearly. And just to see that there are so many people that, you know, that he made an impact on and that, you know, he changed our lives because he was in our lives. And to find out some of these people that never knew him, you know, like I'm doing this because I, I heard about his story or, you know, I heard of how good of a person he is. It's, it just hits the heart whenever you hear that there's people who care about him as much as you do. What I've learned from all of this, especially this week, is that although my brother died, um, his love and his memories will never die. They're always going to be with us for our children, for his children, for our grandchildren, for his children's grandchildren, and so that's very important. It brings back the memories of, of what we went through. You know, after his passing, but it it uh, it, it touches you in a way that you're you're it, 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 tremendously. We're honored in a way where we really have a hard time explaining. It. Well, we're at the uh, Capitol, uh, our uh, memorial ceremony for the uh, officers that were all killed throughout the country last year. And today we're honoring Jaime Padron, who's one of our officers that was killed on April 6th of uh, 2012. Hey, get over here, hurry up, find another straggler. We've got about 60 of our officers here, his family's here, and it's just been a, uh, it's been a tremendous week. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. We can never repay our debt to these officers and their families. But we must do what we can with all that we have to live our lives in a way that pays tribute to their memory. That begins, but does not end.
my gathering here. Uh, today, all the names will be read. New Hampshire, Michael P. Maloney. As a final step of adding them to the memorial. Sandra E. Rogers. We will be here until all the names are read. We will be together as a group. Brian D. Bachman. We will do our final salute, and then we will go back to doing what we do best, which is serving the people of Austin, Texas. Jaime D. Padron. He had a lot of life experience, and he was shared with a lot of people, and um, uh, he just always wanted to, you know, do what he can to, to, to help people out, to, to make you a, a better person. I guess they're starting to get used to going to a lot of ceremonies. I guess they're really starting to understand how, um, uh, how much their dad meant to the community and how great of a guy he actually was. I couldn't do it by myself. I really couldn't. Uh, there's some events sometimes that it's really hard for me to go to. It's really hard for me to, uh, even now, it's hard for me to really talk about them. But being around a, a group of people right here gives me a lot more strength than I normally have. Morton M. Ford III. It's emotional. It really is. It's uh, what, what helps is everyone here is going through what I've gone through. And um, we rely on each other. I've, I've made a lot of friends out here from different states that have experienced the same kind of pain that I've experienced. It's, it's very touching. and. Uh, the amount of other officers that are here, uh, the honor that, 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 that the nation, Capital of Nations, gives you as a survivor when you come here, it's, it's very touching, very touching. We, don't, we didn't expect it. It's there forever. It's a permanent reminder of the love and the support that, that, we, that I believe we'll have for the rest of our lives because his family in law enforcement became our family in law enforcement. Tracy A. Harden. Together we're bringing each other up and, and helping each other feel better and all seeking the same, the same sort of closure together. From adversity, what Jaime gave us was the opportunity. Uh, I said it before and I'll say it to my dying days. His greatest gift was giving the people of Austin the opportunity to show these officers how much support they have. And uh, it's changed and I think it's really built and the really uh, heartened our people to know that they have so much support in Austin, Texas. It's historical, you know, and, and he'll always be here. We're going to be gone and he'll always be here.